Uh, music. Uh, yeah. Okay, music. so this was the idea. Uh, it was to do the Wii Remote hack that Johnny Lee proposed. Mm -hmm. And um, the first step was building the right Okay, so this is basically what the representation... This is, this is actually an adaptation of, of Johnny Lee's diagram. The main difference is that I've stuck a tantalum capacitor in here. And the reason we did that was because I got a kind of a sucky switch. We couldn't get decent switches. So the one that was in there, I realized it was um, not really great. So if you hit the button, it might give more than one pulse. So I put the capacitor across the LED to, um, to dampen any of the, 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 the scratchy touches of, of the switch. Um, essentially, this is pretty much how the pen is on the inside. You've got the LED on the front with a capacitor attached to it. The cable's going, one cable going back to the power source, and then of course the other one being interrupted by a switch. We've got a little, we've got a little bit of um, heat shrink tubing is what I use to keep the, t the cable from slipping out and giving, leaving enough slack in here so that we don't accidentally pull the guts of the pen out if somebody pulls on the cord. In this case, that LED is actually a 1.8 volt LED. We're powering it with a 1.5 volt power um, source. The battery will probably last for hours uh, of use. This is the capacitor, the LED, and the two bits of heat shrink tubing which are going to hold them together. You, slip, you just simply just simply slide everything together. Of course, you have to be careful of making sure the polarities are, it's easy to tell, the two long pins are the positive ones. And um, the heat shrink tubing was, I got from Radio Shack. Uh, they got these nice little colorful packages and it came in useful because once this was heat shrunk, I could quickly tell which was positive and which was negative. Um, I chose tantalum capacitors because they're very, very small and they can literally fit into the snout of the pen. Use a regular hair dryer to shrink the heat shrink tubing. That's the pen that we use, just uh, standard, standard dry marker. And what I did was cut the back off and then take the ink out. Now I use dry markers. You can use any one, you can use any of them, but of course if you use the permanent markers, it gets really messy because of the amount of ink. Uh, so I use the dry markers because it really was not as messy. And that was the only reason for using dry markers. Press the point out and remove it. And then what you do is you hold the pen in your hand to try and figure out where your index finger is going to be. Just, you know, hold it comfortably and you can kind of figure out where your index finger is going to be so that you can then cut a hole. I just used a, a regular art knife, an X-Acto blade, to cut a hole, just drilling manually. Mm -hmm. And drilled it until it was about the right size that it would fit the top of the, of the switch. Okay. Now, these were the only switches that I could find. This was, and that was also the reason I had to use a dry marker because the pen was, the switch was so big. If I had gotten a nice flat switch, I could have used something small like a, a ballpoint pen, but this is just too long. In fact, it was so long that I actually had to bend the pins out just to get it to squeeze in. Um, this was basically how I had to solder things together, easy enough. Uh, power, coming, power coming in, positive and negative from the battery, and then these two leading off to the LED and the capacitor. Um, I left enough cable coming out so that when I, when I stuck it through, I could actually use this cable to pull the switch through. Otherwise, it is very, very, it's very tight, very tight uh, quarters inside there. So and I left the cables very long so that when I slid it through, I could actually tug on these to pull the switch through and get it in the right spot and then, and then anchor it. You then cut the cut the uh, the wires down, put heat shrink tubing on top of them. You solder the the LED and, and uh, capacitor in place. Heat shrink tube that as well, and you literally just push everything back in, and it's enough of a tight fit that the LED and capacitor are literally sitting inside. The reason the LED is a little bit off angle is because the capacitor is just about there. Not a big issue. Next thing you do is, on the back of the, of the pen, slice a little hole. Now I used a telephone cable because that's what I had available because it was also was nice and flat and it 
was for aesthetic reasons it didn't look too bad. So I just simply cut a little bit out that was like just the right size for the cable. Slip the cable through and some more heat shrink tubing here and that's going to be our strain release. When you assemble the whole thing, put everything together. I could have used um, super glue, but I just used frosted tape in the event that I needed to go back in, that sort of thing. So I did that with both of them. So instead of gluing it shut, I just used tape. And it would have been nice if I had been able to find a battery holder small enough to fit in there. I couldn't, that's why we have the umbilical cord and the batteries. And you can actually see that you can test it by the, any camera with a CCD usually can see the, the LED lighting. So you can just aim it at your digital camera or your cell phone if it's got a camera, press the button and you can see whether the LED is actually lighting or not. And this is what, the, this is what I deliver to the TTCS. All wrapped up and ready to go. Mm. That's pretty great. And what was the final cost, roughly? Um, the total cost was around $150. TT. TT. Okay. Yeah, which works out to about 25 US, I think. To make two pens. To make, yes, two to pens. make both, to make the both yeah. of the pens. Okay, 150 for two, two pens. Yes. And, and Paul is going to tell you about the software side of things.